government has successfully passed a motion in the National Assembly that acknowledges the Joint Service's recent successes in fighting crime, especially as it relates to the notorious fine man and his gang. The motion, which was presented in the name of Home Affairs Minister Clement Rohi, was passed Monday evening despite strong opposition from the other parliamentary parties. Here again is Edward Lane. All members, 32 members voted for the motion, 20 declined. I declare the motion carried. But before this motion was passed, it met with opposing arguments from both the PNCR and the Alliance for Change. It basically called on the National Assembly to extend appreciation to the security forces for a job well done, allowing the administration to design incentive programs for their services. Home Affairs Minister Clement Rohi in his presentation said this was proposed after the Joint Services managed to dismantle the notorious Rondel Rollins gang. He also chided the opposition for accusing government of promoting bounty hunting. How can we say that we are converting the Joint Services as a bounty killer? When we know for years these people have been working day in and day out. I'm wondering, Mr. Speaker, if honorable members are not concerned when they walk in the presence of joint services personnel, when they walk in the presence of soldiers, when they walk in the presence of police. Could you look at them in the eyes? Could you stare them straight in their faces? But PNCR leader Robert Corbyn criticized the motion and deeming it manipulative, attempt to divert attention from the torture allegations against the joint services and access to the state media, which was earlier presented by his party, an argument that was supported by AFC leader Raphael Trotman. If you just proceed to commend the services, which, I, as I said, we have already done, and you don't at the same time as the government tell us that you're putting in controls to monitor the excesses of a few elements of the force, you might be giving them carte blanche to continue in unlawful activity. As a legislator, if I am to engage in the payment of police officers by giving them tokens and not the medals which have been prescribed by law for them to receive, I can, in my view, judge them to become then, when they would have been offered and taken, yeah, bounty hunts. Trotman said while the two criminals were killed, the root cause of crime still exists. But Prime Minister Samuel Hines in his rebuttal said the motion should be acknowledged taking into account the fear Rawlins and his cohorts had brought upon Guyanese. On August 28th last, Rawlins and multiple murder accused German Skinny Charles were killed during a shootout with joint services on the linden Suzdike Highway, while several other gang members were killed in earlier confrontations elsewhere. Edward Lane, The Six O'Clock News. Armed bandits have robbed a fishing crew of their catch while in the Whiny River. Reports are that Richard Mangal and his crew was fishing in the vicinity of Crabwood on October 25, around 7.30 hours, when four men armed with firearms attacked them. The men came in another vessel and held them at gunpoint, took away their catch, and escaped. Meanwhile, a miner of Maruka Northwest District has died after a pit he was mining in caved in. 23-year-old Richard Moses was mining in a pit around 17 hours on Sunday last at Perseverance Bakdam Aranka in the Northwest District when the incident occurred. He was rushed to the Port Kaituma Hospital where he was pronounced dead on arrival. The leader of a parliamentary political party is questioning the availability of search and rescue facilities. While neither the transport nor Home Affairs Minister could give a definitive answer, Mr. Clement Rohe said he is not responsible for rescue operations. This comes as several persons died in a boat mishap in the Quarantine River recently. Nicasia Logan has more. Transport and Hydraulics Minister Robson Benz says a full report into the Quarantine River boat mishap will be provided shortly. This assurance was given to the National Assembly after leader of the Alliance for Change, Raphael Trotman, asked about the availability of search and rescue facilities. I wish to state that we are having an investigation into the incident and a full and complete report will be, interim report will be provided shortly. However, Minister Ben explained that no formalized response was provided because of the unregulated nature of their departure. Nevertheless, extensive searches were conducted over the last two days. I think that these crossings are illegal. I would like and, 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 and 
that there are there there are oh, members, give, proper give the minister an opportunity proper to answer the question. regulated you, asked it, you know safe crossings of the quarantine river provided at Molson Creek to the Kanawima Ferry Service. And Home Affairs Minister Clement Rohi, in his response, said he does not have the responsibility for rescue operations. On October 24, a vessel carrying several passengers sank while traveling from Suriname to Guyana. Five persons have since been confirmed dead, while the two survivors, Leslie Owen Austin and Sherry Ann Haynes, are recuperating. Reporting for the NCN 6 o'clock news, I am Nicasio Logan. Agriculture Minister Robert Passot says the Guyana Forestry Commission has gained international recognition for its role in promoting guidance and knowledge about issues in the logging sector. He made this statement on a visit to the Forestry Training Center in Buckhall, Essequibo. More in this report. Agriculture Minister Robert Passot said the Forestry Training Center was commended for its work and as a result the United States and other donors have indicated an interest in the program. Um, I think it has been recognized um, that Guyana too is, is, is rightly placed because of our track record and which is validated by a number of um, international and multinational agencies as to what we do in terms of um, forest management. The facility, which is funded predominantly by the government and partially by the International Tropical Organization, OTTO, provides training for both local and international participants. It has links to Indonesia and Brazil, and natives from Trinidad and Tobago are often trained there. Minister Passat also noted that more than 1,000 persons were trained by the facility and are deployed directly into the logging sector. He adds that there has been vast improvements in the sector as a result of good forestry and management and sustainability. And through sustainable activities, we will be able to preserve um, our status in terms of being able to show the world that look, you can carry out logging and forestry activities and at the same time make a tremendous contribution um, to, to um, climate change. According to the minister, the center has served an industry and product development mechanism in terms of logging. Reporting for the NCN 6 o'clock news, I am Adeli Rampersod. On behalf of the NCN news team, we want to wish you all a happy Diwali.